Good happy Tuesday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to Good Evening, New Hampshire. Let's begin. First up, let's begin with your local news. Youth Treatment Center ordered to suspend admission after suspected overdose. Four girls, one boy taken to hospital after showing possible symptoms of overdose. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Amy Cavino. This is the Chevy Trax, the Chevy Equinox, the all-new Chevy Blazer, and the roomy Chevy Traverse. No matter what you're looking for in an SUV, Chevy's got you covered. This was the scene at 56 North River Road in Manchester around 9.30 Monday night. According to its website, Granite Pathways Youth Treatment Center meets the needs of youth ages 12 to 17 who are struggling with drug or substance abuse. June 5 responded with one ambulance for a possible overdose at the facility. Upon arrival, um, there was actually four patients that had the symptoms of uh, an overdose. And they were conscious, but they were exhibiting symptoms similar to overdoses. It's not clear who called 911, but first responders say staff at the center didn't appear to know that ambulances were coming. Manchester police were already at the scene dealing with another altercation and shifted to help with the mass casualty. In the dispatch from Manchester Fire, the caller said they suspected that these individuals or these juveniles had Xanax in their system. And upon arrival, there was no signs of any Xanax, but there was some uh, words spoken from the patients, and that's what they, were, they had taken. Granite Pathways Youth Treatment Center told News 9 they had, quote, no information about the incident. Fire officials say all of the patients were conscious but needed treatment. So they were all considered a medical emergency and considered an overdose, and they were all taken to the hospital immediately. Just, just before we went on the air, the public relations firm representing Granite Pathways did release a statement to News 9 that says in part, our obligation to protect the privacy of our youth restricts our ability to offer additional detail. The facility followed its internal safety and notification procedures, which includes contact with the families as well as local and state public officials. That's the latest here from Manchester. We are live. Amy Cavino, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into weather. Weather right now is clear, 44 degrees. And here's a look at your hourly forecast. What to expect for the next couple of hours. And... Your weather for tonight, a few passing clouds, otherwise generally clear, low 32 degrees, winds light and variable. For tomorrow, cloudy with occasional rain in the afternoon, high 48 degrees, winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour, chance of rain 100%. And we're going to switch gears now, let's go into sports. An BA player from Manchester visits TD Garden for the first time. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jason King. Chapel Tractor has been in our family since 1955, when great-grandfather Pearlie and our grandfather George. Wenyon Gabriel entered the TD Garden Monday afternoon for the first time ever, and he did so as a member of the Sacramento Kings. This is almost like a you know, dream come true. We used to you know, watch the NBA all the time, watch the Celtics, watch them in the playoffs, and now I'm over here, I get to play in the Garden for my first time. So I mean, this is really my first time even being here. Yeah, so that's a, that's a different type of experience. I was on the court earlier like, man, I've seen this court on TV so many times. The 22-year-old left the University of Kentucky after two seasons and signed with the Kings as a free agent in 2018. He spent last season in Sacramento's Development League. 
I mean, I'm definitely proud of myself and the steps I've taken. And, uh, you know, I look at everything in the past as just uh, lessons to learn from and go forward from. So I feel like um, what I did last year was good to get me to this point. Now i got to keep working to get to the next point. And the next point, you know, I still got big goals that I'm working towards. And um, I'm just happy this place where I got to start my career. Entering Monday night's game, Wenyon had played in seven of the Kings' 15 games, averaging about six and a half minutes per game. But his floor time isn't what he's concerned about now. He just wants to improve. Yeah, I mean, I'm still developing more of a role on the team coming in, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to get better every day, and that's definitely one of my, my main focuses, is get better and try to, you know, then you crack the rotation, become more of a rotational player. Try to take it step by step like that. Wenyon said he had to get 14 tickets for Monday night's game and wanted to treat his family and friends to a win. I'm hoping for the win. The beat Celtics twice, and that'll be really good for our organization. We'll get up to 500, and uh, you know, hopefully, you get in the game. You get, you don't. I want to get the win. See my family. I get to go home tonight. In Boston, Jason King, WMUR News Nine Sports. Okay, and there you go on that video in that report. And the Boston Bruins, they play tonight at seven o'clock p.m. Boston Bruins at Montreal Canadiens, and you can watch the game on Netson. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into New Hampshire life. Preservance production present a Christmas Carol national tour, 7 o'clock p.m. at Stockbridge Theater. And Cook's Corner, Bruschetta. Take a look at this recipe from WMUR News 9, Cook's Corner. And Cook's Corner is on the road. Welcome to Salem. We are at Barron's Major Brands, and we have Diane from Apple Hill Farm joining us today. Yes, Welcome. thank you. Thank you, thank you. You got a lot of stuff out here. Oh, we have. This is a great kitchen to work in, too. I have yeah. to thank Major Brands for this. This yeah. is wonderful. What are you making for us? Well, we're going to do a tomato bruschetta. We're in the middle of tomato right. season. Everybody wants to do something with all the tomatoes they have. Mm -hmm. So this is one that you can do. You can actually can it up and have it in the wintertime, or you can just do it and have it fresh and leave it in the refrigerator for three to five days. Sure. So you're going to start with a little bit of garlic. I took three loaves of garlic, and I minced them up. And then I had a half a cup of dry white wine, mm -hmm. and then I used some of the local wine, a little bit of water, and then a half a cup of white vinegar. And, and a lot of this, again, very local. Exactly. That's what you, you can like find to these use. things at the farmer's market. The, the olive oil came from Concord. It's one that blends up there. It's wonderful. <laughs> so, and then we're going to add, I've simmered this for about five minutes. Okay. So it's kind of reduced down a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of sugar. Okay. And then, well, of course, the spices. We got a little oregano. <laughs> and again, this is something you can add to if you want. A little bit of parsley and a little bit of basil. And then a little bit of the balsamic vinaigrette, which gives it the flavor. And again, this is the local one from Concord. So right. that's Olivier. And then we're going to stir that all together. And because I've already reduced it down, we're going to add the plum tomatoes. Now oh, we've look chopped how red them all up. Those are. Oh, and I think we threw in a, one of the heirloom tomatoes to give it a little bit of color. Yeah. And then because I kind of like a little sweetness, we're going to add a cut up peach because it's peach season too. <laughs> so we're just starting to pick peaches at Apple Hill. And then you just simmer this for about 10 minutes until okay. it cooks down and simmers up. Once you have it all cooked up, you can preserve it in jars if you want. And it's just like a canning technique. If you go to Ball and go to the website, they'll tell you exactly how to do it. But you just put it, make sure these glasses have been sterilized in boiling water first. I didn't bring the kettle. Then you'll put the tomatoes in here, seal it with a cover, and then you have to water bath it. Okay. Which means you take the jars and you put it back in the boiling water. And you cook it for about 20 minutes so that they can preserve and seal up really nice for winter. But if you don't want to do it... You can just seal it in a jar and put it in the refrigerator and just have it fresh. I was going to say, you can just eat it right away because usually I don't have very good luck about just putting things on the shelves for very long. Well, and with the bruschetta, <laughs> the bruschetta it doesn't last very long either. You get the you homemade bread from the farmer's market, slice it up, have it outside on the barbecue, drizzle a little more olive oil on it, maybe a little bit of cheese, and you're all set. That would be a complete dinner for us with a glass of nice wine. You're all set. You bought a full meal for us. Huh? Almost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell us real quick, Apple Hill Farm, uh, you, obviously, you specialize in a lot of local ingredients when you're do, uh, doing some of these recipes Oh, we sure and do. Everything. Yep, as much local as we can find. And yeah. a lot of it we grow right at the farm. Like the tomatoes and the peaches came right from the farm. Beautiful. Okay, Diane, that smells fantastic. That looks great. 
Stay tuned. We've got more coming up after the break. Okay. And there you go. That looks good. Yummy and delicious. And that is it for this Tuesday evening edition of Good Evening New Hampshire. I hope you all enjoyed watching this Tuesday evening edition of Good Evening New Hampshire. I'll see you back here tomorrow night for another edition of Good Evening New Hampshire. I'll see you in the morning for Good Morning New Hampshire. Good night and bye everyone.